So here's a quick little video to show the different options that are available in the Z Utilities unofficial ZBrush Macro Pack 01. So I just have ZBrush loaded up and I'm just going to first dock this macro tab over to the side here. And I'm just going to go through quickly what each of these macros here is going to do inside of ZBrush. So we're just going to go from top to bottom. So the first one we have here is Adaptive Skin. And this is going to allow you to come through and say if you have a Z sphere here, and I start adding some little parts, like so. And I want to convert this to a sculptable mesh. So if you just come over here and you have a Z sphere active, come over here and just simply click Adaptive Skin 2. It's going to take whatever you have as a Z sphere or a mannequin file, and then it's going to automatically convert it to geometry. So if I go to my subtool palette now, you'll see I have the original Z-Sphere on top, and then I have the new skinned version of that Z-Sphere automatically applied to that tool. So this will allow you to modify that Z-Sphere pretty quick, and then with one single click here, I'll do the conversion process and then append it back as a new subtool. So directly below this button, we have the appended ZTL reset and the appended ZTL save. So what this is going to allow you to do, it's going to allow you to perform a quick save function, but with ZTLs. So quick save up here will allow you to save project files. If you click this, it's going to save a ZPR file every time. And this option here will allow you to save a ZTL file. So the first thing you want to do with this is you want to click this appended ZTL save button. And this is going to open up a new window. And in here we can set where we want this file to be saved to. So I just have them on my desktop and in a macro video folder here. And now I just need to enter a prefix. So this one's just a head, so I'm just going to type head. And you're going to just type the prefix of it. So when you click save, it's going to add a underscore and then append a number after it. So right now we just have head, and if I click save on that, this is going to now be saved as head01. So now if I'm coming through and start working on the model like so, and I just quickly want to save this, instead of going to tool, and come over here and just click this appended ZTL save again, and it's going to automatically save it and append a new number to that file. So now if I navigate to that folder, you're going to see that it's now created a head02 file. And so this will allow you to come through and anytime you click this button, it's going to generate a new file. So if I click it again, it's going to generate a head03, and I'll just keep appending saves like so. Now if the file already exists on your machine, it's just going to append the next number after it. So it's never going to overwrite your file. So if you want to get rid of 01 or 02, you're going to have to delete it manually. Now if you want to change your location after you have this started out, you can come over here and just click this appended ZTL reset. And this is going to reset the macro here. And now the next time you click this appended ZTL save, it's going to ask you for a new folder and a new prefix. So that is how this function works with this macro. Now below this, we have a center mesh to world. So if I turn on my floor here, and let's say I have my model and I've moved it off in space over here. So if I want to recenter this model back, I can come through and say go to geometry and go to position and type in the values here. But with this button, it's going to automate that process. So if I simply click this button here, it's going to center that model's position back to the zero, zero of the world. And then correspondingly, the buttons that go with this center mesh are these ones down the bottom here. So zero, X, Y, and Z. And this will allow you to just zero out your model in one of those positions. So that was the X. And if I want to zero it to Y, so instead of getting all the axis is to zero, you can just choose to perform the zero on a Pacific axis. Now below this, we have a DynaMesh Slice option here. I'm just gonna come through and select a sphere here. And to use this macro, you need to make sure that your model is in DynaMesh mode. So I'm gonna go to the tool palette here, I'm gonna convert this to a poly mesh, I'm go to the DynaMesh tab here, and I'm just gonna set a quick resolution and then click DynaMesh. So now this model is in DynaMesh mode. I'm just gonna turn off my frames here. Now I can select the slice brush, the slice curve brush here, and I come through and slice my mesh, and it's going to generate a new polygroup here. And after this new polygroup is generated, you can generate as many as you like, just come over here and click this DynaMesh slice button, and it's going to apply the DynaMesh with the groups option, and then apply an auto groups, so you're left with two sections that are fully closed. 
This is handy for coming in and say slicing up your model like so. You click this button, it's going to automate that process, and now you have your model chunked out like this. So a handy little automation process for using Dynamesh along with Slice to get these groups nice and organized. Below the Dynamesh Slice option here, you have a Dynamic to Dynamesh. So I'm going to come through and select a cylinder object here, and then I'm just going to make this Polymesh 3D, and then I'm going to activate Dynamic Subdivision. So say you have this Dynamic Subdivision here, and normally if you come through and apply a Dynamesh, it's going to not apply the Dynamic Subdivision first, so you're going to end up with a Dynamesh of your lower resolution model. So by clicking this macro, it's going to automate the conversion process of taking this dynamic subdivision model, applying the dynamic, and then converting it to a dynamesh. So I can come now and simply click this button, and it's going to apply that dynamic subdivision and then convert it to a dynamesh. So just a little automation to speed up the process of converting a model to a dynamesh, so then you can sculpt on it. Below this button, we have a Get OBJ Dimensions, and this is going to return the dimensions of your model inside of ZBrush here if you were to export this out as an OBJ. Now, the OBJ file format does not contain unit values, so these right here, this 1.99, if you load it into an external application that brings things in by default in millimeters, this is going to bring it in at this millimeter size. If you import into an application that defaults to inches values, it's going to take these generic units and turn them into inches. So just be wary of that. But um, by default, most programs usually load stuff in in millimeters, so this is going to give you the millimeter values of this selected subtool inside of ZBrush if you were to export this out as an OBJ file. Below this, we have a Mask by Polygroups button, and this is going to automate the process of the polygroup masking slider. So I've come here and locate the brush palette, dock to the side here. And now we go to Auto Masking. There's this option here called Mask by Polygroups. And if you click this button, it's going to automate the process of coming over here and changing the slider to get that effect to be applied. And this will just do it in a single click. And this is a toggleable button. So you can bind it to a hotkey and then just simply click it. And it's going to either turn it on or turn it off. Below this, we have a Merge Visible 2. So let's go back to my demo head here. And I'm just going to duplicate this model. So I have two of these guys. Now, Merge Visible 2 is going to take the Merge Visible process, and it's then going to append the result back to the file. So if I come with both these models here, so you see I have a three subtools on this mesh here, and I click Merge Visible 2, it's going to take these, merge them together, and then it's going to automatically append it back to the scene. So you don't have to come through and select it in the tool palette and then do the append. It's just going to automate that process for you. Below this, we have a Mirror and Weld 2. So if you're using Mirror and Weld and you have your model in the negative axis, so this is in the negative axis versus the positive axis, if you come through and apply Mirror and Weld, so I come down here and modify topology and then delete hidden and then do Mirror and Weld in X, since these models are in the negative axis, it's not going to have anything to mirror over. So inside of ZBrush, the positive axis always mirrors over to the negative. So with these models being in the negative, when you click Mirror and Weld, you're going to get a dialog that's going to pop up and tell you the resulting 3D mesh does not contain any polygon. So the process to fix this usually is to come down to the deformation panel here, do the Mirror option, and then apply the Mirror and Weld. So this will automate that process for you, and if your model is off into the negative axis inside of space here, and you click Mirror and Weld 2, it's going to apply that process and automatically mirror it to the other side. Now, if your model is already on the positive side, it's always going to mirror from positive to negative. So even if you have a little sliver of your mesh here and you apply this mirror and weld too, it's just going to handle like normal mirror and weld, and it's going to take the positive side and mirror it over to the negative. Below this, we have a quick crease option, and this is handy for applying creasing to your model. So if we come down to the crease area here, you have this crease button, and then you have a tolerance. So this macro is going to set a desired tolerance and then automatically apply the creasing. So by default, this is set to 45. So if I come through and simply click Quick Crease, it's going to look at the mesh surface, and it's going to apply creasing to any angles that are greater than 45 degrees. You can see it's applied creasing to that top and bottom. Now you can change the creasing tolerance that is set by this macro here by simply editing the text file in that macro folder. 
Below this, we have a quick extract function here. So I'm just gonna take my model and divide it up a little bit here. Now with the quick extract functionality, if you have a simple mask on your mesh, you can then click quick extract. It's going to automate the extraction process. So it's gonna go through and generate the extract. It's going to process the extract, so accepting it. And then it's going to clear your mask on your original tool and then select your original tool. So this will allow you to come through and just quickly create quick extractions on your model really fast. Now there are some additional options with this that you can edit in the macro itself to determine a desired thickness. If you always want a specific thickness, to be applied to your model, you can have that set in the macro and it's always going to generate it at that thickness. Below this, the last one here for the pack 01 is the see-through option. And this will automate the process of this see-through slider up here to a toggle. So this is very similar to the mask by polygroup, so it's just taking this slider and turning it into a button. So if you click this here, it's going to activate see-through and now you can see I can see through ZBrush here. And then if I click it again, it's going to turn it off. So another little quick addition there for automating some of the processes inside of ZBrush. So those are the macros that are included in this pack 01 for the Z Utilities unofficial ZBrush macros. And once again, if you do not want to have all these loaded, you can just navigate to that macro directory and then delete the files associated with each macro, and then they won't show up in this list. Now these macros can also be applied to any custom UI. So if you have a pop-up menu or you just have a custom user interface, you can take these and drag them all over the place and use them to your liking. So that is it for uh, this pack 01, and I hope it helps. Thanks.